In this video, let us discuss a very common interview question nowadays. What happens when you inject a prototype bean inside a singleton bean? Now, if you ask this question like, can you tell me about the different scopes in Spring? Everyone will tell singleton, prototype, request, session, application, WebSocket, etc. And they will even give definition of these scopes. But you slightly tweak the question and ask them what exactly happens when you have that scenario. And being an interviewer myself, 9 and 10 candidates will not be able to give the right answer. In some cases, if the candidate is able to uh, guess the answer, they will not be able to give a solution to the problem. Alright, so we all know the default scope in Spring is singleton. That is, the container creates a single instance of the bean and for any number of requests, Spring is going to give the same object which is actually cached in the container. And what is prototype? Every time it is requested, a different instance is returned from the container. So what exactly happens when you inject two different scopes together, that is prototype into a singleton, both beans will be initialized only once at the startup. Prototype will lose its actual behavioral property. Let us take a look at this using an example and what we will do is also we will address this problem using different methodologies. Alright, so I have created a Spring Boot application with a controller with get method and I have two classes. One is a singleton service and the other will be our prototype. Now I can do all the coding in one file right away in the main file itself. But I am creating all this, it's because since the viewers of the video can be diverse, I want to go step by step so that the viewers of every level can understand the problem and the solution. Alright, so now we have two services. Now let's make the service as prototype. So in order to make this, you have to use the scope annotation. And inside the scope annotation, you will find something called configurable bean factory. Use this scope prototype. So now this class will act as a prototype bean. So again, let's go to the controller. So what we are going to do here is like first, we are going to call the singleton service. And inside the singleton service, we have injected the prototype service. So we'll get a response, which will be our first response. And this prototype service is going to return date time, the current date time, okay? So we'll get the first uh, current date time, then we'll wait for one second, and then we'll fire again the singleton service get method to get the second date time. So what do you think the output would be? You should be getting uh, a date time here, and then after one second, you should be getting a different date time here. That is by one, increased by one second. But let's try to run this code and let's see what was the output that we'll get. Okay, so the server has started. Let's go to the browser. So let me fire this now. Do you see the date time hasn't changed? This is our first call and this is our second call. In both the cases, we have got the same date time. That's because both the beans are initialized only once. Prototype will lose its behavior property. Let me refresh again. And again, you get the same. Let me refresh again. And even though the time has changed in my computer, this is still reflecting the first request uh, data. So now, do you see the problem here? There are at least six to seven different ways you can use to uh, fix this problem. So let's take a look at a few of them, okay? The first approach that we are going to take is using the application context. So we are going to directly access a Spring container and then we are going to pull the uh, prototype bean for this. So let me go to the singleton service. So what I'll do is like, I'll auto wire the application context. And then, application context dot get bean and then we'll give proto so what is it exactly doing it's going to programmatically retrieve the beans by calling the application context dot get bean 
let me stop the server and rerun it okay the server is up let's go to a browser and refresh this URI now see, do you see the difference we have 39 and 46 seconds and 39 and 47 seconds now let's again refresh it and we got a different date time now 39.57 seconds and 39.58 seconds so now it is working so we have addressed this issue but the problem here is application context is directly calling the spring container to load the bean here do you see what is the problem here we are actually bypassing the inversion of control instead of spring instead of letting the spring inject the dependencies we are asking the container to give the dependencies for us we might actually use this approach in proxies when you use AOPs like advisors um, or, or if you're using like um, other proxy services, you might actually use application context to get the bean. But in normal cases, it is not advisable to use the application context directly. So is there another way to do that? Yes, we do have another way. Let's take a look at that. So our next approach is to use method injection. We're going to use an annotation called at lookup so for this what we'll do is like we'll create a prototype service prototype service and return null now you might have noticed one thing like our prototype service is going to return null so how does it even work so it doesn't matter actually because this method will be actually overridden by spring dynamically Spring uses proxy to override, override this method and it will actually return back the result as needed by us. So for that what you'll do is like you'll use this prototype method dot get method. Let's stop the server. Start it again. Okay, it has started. So now let's go and refresh our URI. And you could see here it is still working. So this is our second approach to fix injecting a prototype bean inside a singleton bean. There are a bunch of other ways to do it too. For example, you can use Java X Inject provider. So for that, you'll have to do something like this. You can actually use this to again fix the same issue. So for that, what you will have to do is like provider dot get dot get method. Right, let's stop it. Let's rerun this example. Okay, so what is up and let's restart. Okay, so there is an issue. Let's go and fix it. Okay, so I'm missing an auto wire here. Let's stop and rerun this. All right, up. Let's go and refresh, and then you should get the response 4704, 4705. Let me refresh again, and you get two different values. So, now what is the problem with Provider? Provider is actually a, a JSL library, uh, it uses Java X inject, which is not even Spring. So, you're using something that is not. A spring specific component inside a spring project so for this right spring is giving its own initiative which is object factory what you can do is like you can simply replace this provider with object factory and then here to do get object dot get method and it would work so let me quickly restart the server and let's go refresh in the browser and you could see here we have got different data so it is working there there are at least uh, three other ways again to actually address this issue but at least whatever i have explained so far would have clearly explained the context so what happens when we inject a prototype into a singleton and what are the different ways we can actually address this issue and thanks for watching guys and please subscribe for more such videos